chapter 5 a survey of probability concept today we'll discuss the probability and there are six learning objectives for this probability where we have we will learn the definition of the terms probability experiment event and outcome assign the probability using classical empirical and subjective approach calculate the probability using the rule of addition calculate the probability using the rule of multiplication compute the probability using a condensation table and calculate the probability using the base theorem. Okay. The probability will have a value between 0 and 1. 0 meaning that cannot happen, not possible. So for example, the probability that our sun will disappear this year, which is impossible, that's why we have probability 0. Probability equal to 1 meaning that sure, it will happen or yes, it must happen. For example, the chance of rain in Florida this year, for example. So that must be, will happen. Okay. If the value, um, the probability value is bigger, meaning that the chances is higher. And next, we move on to the definition of experiment, outcome and event. An experiment is the process that leads to the occurrence of one or and only one of several possible results. An outcome is the particular result of an experiment. Event is the collection of one or more outcome of an experiment. For example, I want to roll a die. So this is my experiment, I roll a die. All the possible outcome is it can be the phase 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. So event is, let's say, uh, what is the probability that? That is the even number. So when I roll a die, so this is the event. So we have to calculate the probability of the event happen. Let's say the probability of when we roll a die, that's an even number. So even number meaning that 2, 4, and 6, Therefore, we have 3 over 6, or 1 over 2. Okay. Next, we move on to the complement rule. The complement rule is used to determine the probability of an event occurring by subtracting and probability of the event not occurring from 1. So this is the Venn diagram. The summation of the probability that the event A happen and the event A not happens is equal to 1. So therefore, we can write this. The probability A and the probability that A not happen is equal to 1. Or the probability that the event A happen equal to 1 minus the probability that event A not happen. And sometimes we might use the symbol PA equal to 1 minus PA prime. For example, now we have the first outcome is 0 0.61. So let's say there's the probability that the event happens is 0 0.61. And the event not happen will be 1 minus 0 0.61, we have 0 0.39. If the experiments are virtually exclusive. Virtually exclusive meaning that independent. Next time we have this one, independent. If not virtually exclusive, meaning that they have some intersection or they are sharing something is overlapping, then this is not virtually exclusive. There are three ways to assign the probability, which is classical probability, empirical probability, subjective probability. Where classical probability, the keyword is equally likely, equal. Empirical probability is the event happening and is the fraction of the time similar to the event happened in the past. So it's in the fraction. 
similar with the past. Subjective probability is the likelihood or the probability of a particular event happening that is assigned by an individual based on the whatever information is available. So we move on to the example. Classical probability. For example, experiment, roll a die. We have six possible outcomes, which is one, it might be one face up, two face up, three face up, four face up, or five, six face up. So now the question asks, what is the probability that event number happened? So event, sorry, event number, event number will be two, four, six. So there will be three possible the probability of the even number equal to 3 over 6 because all these 6 outcomes are equally likely happen all of them have the same chance for empirical probability is the probability of the event happening is the fraction of the time similar event happened in the past and it's based on the law of large number. So the law of large number meaning that the key to establishing the probability and practical, a larger number of observations provide a more accurate estimate of the probability. Meaning that if you observe it many times, definitely our result will be more accurate. For example, on February 1, 2003, the Space Shuttle Columbia exploded, and this was the second disaster in 123 space missions for NASA. And on the basis of this information, what is the probability that the fusion mission is successfully completed? So, we know that there's in total 1, 2, 3, and this is the second disaster. So the number of successful flights will be 1, 2, 3, minus 2, because 2 disaster, so we'll have 1, 2, 1. Divide the total, 1, 2, 3, so the number will be 0 0.98. Therefore, the probability of successful flight is equal to 0 0.98. Subjective probability, so the example for subjective probability is, for example, estimating the likelihood a person will be married before the age of 30. So it's very subjective whether the people want to marry before or after 30, right? So therefore, this is a subjective probability, which is if there is a little or no data or information to calculate the probability, Therefore, it might arrive at subjective. And this is a summary of the probability where we have objective, which is classical probability and empirical probability. And for classical probability, we have the keyword equal Equality, empirical probability, which is relative frequency, subjective probability, if there is no information or little information, then we can go for subjective. Right. Or asking the opinion. Okay. Very subjective. Right. Just now, um, what's the probability of the people we marry before 30? It's very subjective. It depends. But it's because some people might want to marry before 30, some people might feel that better after the demo mantra and so on. Then we move on to the rule of addition. So if we have the keyword R here, let's say probability A or B, which is equal to probability A plus probability B. If the event are mutually executive, Meaning that if the events are independent, mutually exclusive, there are no, no intersection between each other. 
And now the question asks, what is the probability of A or B? Then we can calculate by probability A plus probability B. For example, um, a plastic bag with a mixture of bean, broccoli, and other vegetables. Most of the bags contain the correct weight, but there are some variation of the size. For example, event A is underweight, event B is satisfactory, event C is overweight. And the number of packages for event A is 100, event B is 3600. Event C is 300, and there's a total of 4,000 packages, 4,000. So we can calculate this probability by event A is 100, 100 divide 4,000. So 100 divide 4,000, we have 0.25. 3,006 divide 4,000, we have 0 0.9. And 300 divided 4,000, we have 0 0.75. So let's say if the question asks, what is the probability that the particular package will be either event A, underweight, or overweight, event C? So event A or event C, which is the probability of event A plus the probability of event C, which is 0 0.25 plus 0 0.75, which is equal to 0 0.10 and next we move on to the complement rule the example of mutually exclusive event note that the probability of A or C is equal to the probability of the complement of the B so let's say if the question asks, find the probability of the um, A or C, we can use beside probability A plus probability B or C, we can use probability, let's say probability A or C, we can either use probability A plus probability C, or we can use 1 minus probability B. Okay. So probability B is equal to 0 0.9. 1 minus 0 0.9, we have 0 0.1. So which is same with probability A plus probability C. And next, we will go to the rule of addition for computing probability. The general rule of addition is if A and B are two events that are mutually, they are not mutually exclusive. Not mutually exclusive meaning that here we have overlapping and this we call as joint probability. I repeat, if there is not mutually exclusive and we have some intersection here, so this one we call as joint probability. Let's move on to the general rule of addition, which is the Venn diagram shows the results of a survey of 200 surveys. Then the result revealed that 120 went to Disneyland and 100 went to the gardens. 60 visited both. Now, what is the probability that a selected person visited either Disneyland, Disney World, or the gardens? So, since that is not mutually exclusive, and the question asks, find the probability of Disney or. So, meaning that we have to use plus. So, the probability of Disney plus the Bush Garden equal to the probability of the Disney plus the probability of the Bush Garden minus the probability that the person to go both place. Okay. So which is equal to, we know that here we have 120 going to the Disney. So 120 divided 200, 
class, we have 100 went to the bush garden, 100 divided by 200, minus 60 visitor pro. So minus 60 divided by 200. Then we have 0 0.6 plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3 at uh, 8. Then we will have 0 0.3. So this is how we calculate the um, addition if that's not mostly exclusive.